What's up, people? BCHQ um, fight night. Uh, it's fight night. John uh, Anthony Johnson versus Ryan Badir. Um, first up, we've got Matt Dwyer versus Randy Brown. Um, Dwyer is a very uh, wiry figure of a fighter. Like he's got a wiry build, um, and he looks like he could snap on impact, like from a punch or a kick. Um, just how he's built. Um, as far as his defence, he looks very vulnerable to me. Um, he gets tagged a lot um, because he's vulnerable. So um, I've got very little knowledge on on Brown. Um, I couldn't find any footage of him fighting, um, so it's hard to say how he's going to go about the fight um, and what his preferred fighting style is. Um, what I will say is that um, he does look strong. Um, like he looks stronger than Dwyer does, but fighting isn't all about strength. Um, so for this, um, because I don't have any background on Brown, I'm going to have to go with Dwyer, and I'm going to go for a second round submission. Uh, second up, we've got Tony Martin versus Philippe Olivieri. Um, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, Tony Martin is a has a pretty nice guillotine choke um, in his armour, and he's... His, I think his strongest asset in general is his submissions, so he's going to be dangerous on the floor. Um, I see him aiming to take it to the ground and, and go for a submission. Um, Philippe Olivieri is natural and comfortable um, in the stand-up, and he's got knockout power as well. Um, he, he also has good um, leg sweep techniques. Um, he's all right at, um, at ground a pound. Um, and as far as submissions, I haven't seen him do any in the footage I've seen of him, so I can't speak on that, but um, he's quite dangerous, so I'm going to go with Tony Martin. Um, I think his grain, ground game will be too much for uh, Olivieri. Um, I'm going to go with a first round submission for Tony Martin. Um, next up, we've got Alex Chacheres versus Massio Fullen. Um, Alex Chacheres is a very skilled fighter, um, he's got great submissions um, and a great stand-up so I think he's very dangerous. Um, all, around he, um, all around he's a good fighter. Um, he started his career by fighting in a backyard fighting club in Miami um, and he's now fighting for the UFC so he's come a long way and he already looks like a mature fighter um, and I think he's got a huge future. Um, massive potential. Um, Massio Fullin, um, very good takedown defense. He also looks comfortable in the guard. Um, and he looks prefer the stand up though. Um, as I said, he's comfortable in the guard. Um, if it goes to the ground, I think he will be quite advanced. He uses, he's got good uh, wrist techniques, like wrist control. Um, so it should be an interesting fight. Um, but I think for me, Alex Chacheres is on a whole nother level um, to uh, Fulham. Um, and I see this ending in a first round stoppage. Uh, George Sullivan versus Alexander Yakolov. Yakolev. Um, George Sullivan seems to prefer to stand up. Um, he likes to uh, slug it out with people and just throw. Um, and he wins most of his fights that way as well. Um, usually by stoppage. Um, he's got very quick takedown maneuvers um, and he's good at avoiding strikes in the stand up because he's got a good movement as well um, and he's also got good stamina. He likes to clinch and use his body um, and size to wear down his opponent so this could be very interesting and might even go to distance for a decision. I feel Sullivan is stronger of the two um, but Yakolev has the stamina and movement. I'm not sure what Sullivan is like on the ground, um, but Yakolev is is okay on the ground. Um, so I think this could be a close fight. I'm going to go with Sullivan in a split decision. Um, Dustin Ortiz versus Wilson Rice. Um, Ortiz is a wrestler by heart, but he doesn't like mind striking in a stand-up. Um, it's a very tough kid, like. He can make he can take a lot of punishment like if he's getting like bombs thrown at him he can take it um, from what I've seen I'm not blown away by him but he's definitely tough um, 
Wilson Vice is he's a very dangerous fighter, especially on the ground um, and in the back mount positions. Uh, he's got very good da uh, takedown ability. Um, we we'll look to use his grappling. I feel he's got jiu jitsu background. Um, I think this will be very one sided in the favour of Vice. Um, I think he's just so more advanced and experienced. So I'm going to go for a second round submission for Vice. Rafael Natal versus Kevin Casey. Now Natal is a jiu jitsu, a -jitsu fighter um, and wins most of his fights via submission. So he'll be looking to take it to the ground and control from there. Um, he uses hammer fists um, in the ground and pound. Kevin Casey is a, um, has a powerful frame and likes to throw punches, has nice leg sweeps. Um, his power is especially um, in the ground and pound is lethal. Um, and he's got dangerous elbows in the ground and pound as well. Um, he's just a ver very well-rounded athletic fighter. Um, I want to go for Kevin Casey as I feel he's quicker and stronger than Natal. Um, and if he can avoid getting in a vulnerable position on the ground, I think he will win the fight. Um, I predict a second round stoppage. Olivia Orbin Mercier versus Diego Ferreira. Um, Olivier likes to throw a lot of strikes, including leg kicks. Um, he's got nice knee strikes, uh, especially in the clinch. Um, he's got takedown ability and likes to ground and pound on the mat. Um, on top of that, he has submission moves as well. Diego Ferreira, jiu-jitsu artist, likes to get to the mount and uses the submission techniques. Um, he doesn't mind ground and pound on the mat. Not sure about this one as far as it's going to go. Um, I don't really know a great deal about either of the people, to be honest. Um, in terms of styles, I think it favours Ferreira as, he, as Mercer likes to strike a lot. So... I think it's going to leave him open to Ferreira's submissions um, and ground and pound, so and the ground game that he's got. So I'm going to go for a second round submission um, for Ferreira. Tarek Safadin versus Jake Ellenberger. Um, Tarek Safadin has a mix of Muay Thai and kickboxing style in his stand up. Um, he's got dangerous flying knees, has uh, nice leg sweeps submission skills and also he's got takedown ability and just generally a very skilled all-round fighter but more clinical in the stand-up for me. Um, Jake Ellenberger likes to exchange in a stand-up and get takedowns and get to the ground and pound and go from there. Um, I'm going to go for Safadin. I feel that he's a lot more, he's got a lot more in his armour and then he's got a bigger skill set. Um, I think this will be a striking fight, um, not much on the map and but a stand-up fight, so I'm gonna I'm gonna predict a, a head kick knockout first round for um, Safadin. Sage Northcutt versus Brian Barberina. Uh, Northcutt, despite looking like a '90s teen movie star, um, there's no doubt in that kid has major potential and already an incredible talent. Um, he's very explosive, extremely quick and athletic. Um, he has knockout power. He's good in the ground and pound. Because of his quickness, he puts a lot of pressure on you. Um, his timing is just second to none. So even if he isn't the aggressor, his opponents are very wary of him countering um, if they try to push the pace. Um, he's got submission in his armour, and for such a young fighter, he's, he's got a, such a mature head on his shoulders. Um, and he's going to go far, I feel. Um, and he hasn't let all the attention and media coverage he's been getting get to his head, which is nice to see. Um, and it, it, he's not got complacent either. As I said, it's easy to get complacent when you, you've got all that much attention on you. Um, he's also unbeaten to date and has a lot of confidence, so it's going to be hard to beat no matter who he's against. Um, And he's only going to get better as well, so I think um, Barbaru, ba uh, Barberini will have the weight advantage, I think, but Northcutt 100% has the speed on him. Um, he doesn't seem to have a good defence blocking and avoiding getting strikes. Um, he needs to keep his hands up longer and more consistent as he gets tagged a lot in the head. Um, he isn't afraid to go to war and throw punches, but against someone of Northcutt's skill level, 
Um, that's not going to help him one bit. And I see this being a very quick fight. And I think Barbarina um, is just nowhere near Northcutt's skill um, or ability. So I'm going with a Northcutt uh, early first round stoppage. Lori Alcantara versus Jimmy v Rivera. Um, Alcantara, I cannot find any previous footage of him, so I don't know what he has to offer really, or what his preferred style is. Um, for me, Jimmy Rivera um, likes to use leg kicks. He's small, but he's quick in the stand up and striking, and then backing up, so he's hard to connect um, punches with, like in the counters. Um, he can throw a punch to stun his opponents too. Um, He's quick to react if he gets it um, if they fall to the mat uh, um, and puts immediate pressure on him um, with a ground a pound. He's got very nice punch combinations um, and his style in the stand up looks a lot like a boxer to me. Um, and as I said, he uses leg kicks too, so he's versatile. Um, as I have no footage of uh, Alcantara, I'm going to have to go with Rivera and I'm going to go for a, a judge's decision. semi-main event uh, Josh Barnett versus Ben Rothwell uh, Josh Barnett a brick house of a man if you see the size of this guy it's pretty impressive he, he fights a lot in Japan um, he's got a lot of experience one of his main strengths for me is just his sheer power of his strikes someone of his size hitting you you're gonna feel it for sure um, he's surprisingly agile for a man his size too um, he's got very good reversal skills speed for his size as well um, that's mainly down to his agility again I feel um, he looks to use his knees if he gets in a clinch he likes to use ankle locks on the mat um, but I do think his weakness is on the mat he struggles to get tap outs and stoppages on the mat for me so that's somewhere he needs to work on um, and see it'd be interesting to see if he's improved on that um, Ben Rothwell he seems to have some nice elbows when he's in the ground and pound um, and he's in his opponent's guard. Um, he likes to ground a pound on when he's on top as well. Um, I think his main weakness though is his conditioning. So I think he needs to try and take control of the pace of the fight to put it more in his favour. He has a nice right hand that connects at times, but um, the, and it can knock people out and get downs on people. But I feel Barnett will take this quite easy, just because of his previous experience and. I just think he's a better all-round fighter, so I'm going for a second round stoppage for Barnett. And finally, main event, Anthony Johnson versus Ryan Badir, light heavyweight. Um, Anthony Johnson, first um, and foremost, is just explosive. Um, it looks like it would hurt you if you hit him. Like his, He looks like he's built of granite. Um, he's got so much power in his shots as well. Um, if I was Badir or, or Bader, I'm not really sure how you pronounce that, um, I'd avoid getting in the stand-up with Johnson. It's, I don't think he could compete with Johnson, and I think Johnson will knock him, knock him out in the stand-up. I think it's too much of a risk. Um, I'm not sure how comfortable he is on the ground, as the footage I've seen of him, he's won all his fights via uh, stoppages or knockouts. Um, he does have good takedown skills. Um, there's no doubt that uh, Bader also has power in his hands and he's got knockout power too. Um, but I do think that Johnson's speed will counter anything Bader, um, Bader throws at him in the stand up. Um, I think if he can place a shot, Bader, then he can potentially get a knockout. But I think it's far too much of a risk in a stand up just because of Johnson's speed. Um, Again, but Vader wins most of his fights first uh, via knockouts and stoppages, so they're quite similar in a way. Um, but I do feel Johnson's got that speed advantage. Um, so I don't know if Vader's got any ground game either in his arsenal. So I think this um, will go to the ground, and it'll be more of a grappling match, just because I think they respect each, each other too much in a stand-up. And I don't think either of them will want to risk it, um, getting an early stoppage or a knockout. So I think it will end up on the floor. Um, a 
scheduled for five rounds. Um, I'm going to predict a third round knockout for Johnson. I just I feel he he's at a different level to Bader, and he's got more momentum going f into this fight as well. And I think he's got more mental strength as well. So that's it, guys. It's um, two days. It's on the thirtieth. Um, it's on BT. I believe it starts at one a.m. Might be wrong on that, but it's usually the main events are around uh, four o'clock in the morning. So if you're up, definitely check it out. Um, as I said, the UFC is growing. For me, it's the biggest combat sport out there now. It's overtaken boxing, so it's grown as a sport. So even if you haven't seen it before, when you catch it on, when you're just flicking through the channels, definitely take take some time, check it out, and see if you like it. Be back tomorrow, guys. Thanks.